Hi, this is Wim Vlewa again. Uh, we are talking this week about LiDAR remote sensing. LiDAR is light detection and ranging. It's a, an active technique like the microwave techniques it's, uh, that has passive and active. LiDAR is only active, really. And it's being used to look at elevation uh, data, uh, altitude of different things. Uh, so you can use a LiDAR to detect uh, a variety of uh, things related to topography. has lots of applications uh, related to looking at the landscape. You can look at the topography of the whole Earth with LiDAR. It would be very expensive. LiDAR is an expensive technique because it's quite a commercial. You don't have a lot of satellites up there that actually can measure the whole Earth surface with the detail that we like to have. So there's many applications with LiDAR that uh, use that detailed information to look at flood mapping, looking at urban environments, uh, looking at uh, uh, how where different uh, buildings are being built, and really detailed information that uh, you normally would measure with uh, 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 instrumentation on the ground, uh, with uh, uh, surveying techniques. Uh, but uh, with LiDAR, you actually can do things much faster because you can actually get a quick overview for larger areas uh, with these instruments as they fly over with an aircraft. Uh, different techniques with LiDAR too, but we're not going to get too much into it, but you have discrete LiDAR, waveform LiDAR, and they have different kind of uh, ways of sampling uh, the Earth's surface. And you, the more you pay, the, the more information you get. Uh, quite often uh, that can be about uh, $1 per acre if you fly about a million acres uh, to $2 an acre. Uh, so depending on, on what you're after. and. Uh, so with LiDAR, you're going to get uh, the X, Y, Z, basically. You get a location as well as the, the height. And that height uh, can also have an intensity value where the amount of reflected uh, energy that's coming back is recorded as well. So you get intensity and the X, Y, Z coordinates uh, that allow you to give a lot of, get a lot of information uh, that you can then use to, to map vegetation uh, or rivers, like I said before, uh, flood mapping, uh, lots of applications, power lines, things like that. So it's all based on uh, the speed of light uh, being sent out by a transmitter, and it's coming back uh, received by an antenna, the time it took for this, uh, the, the, the pulse to come back uh, is basically uh, uh, half the time of uh, um, it took because it goes back, uh, goes to the Earth and then come back. So you basically have to divide the time uh, by two and then time to speed of light. And you basically have the time it took uh, or the distance it took for it to, uh, to come back, right? So, um, so the distance is basically the measure that you, you really uh, record or, or calculate to get the height for these data sets that uh, can then be spatially distributed. Um, I think that's in many ways uh, what we're going to be looking at today. There's going to be a lab again. There's going to be a problem set as well. Uh, this is a very an up-and-coming technique, so it's very useful uh, to know about LiDAR, and uh, you can integrate it with other data sets as well. Uh, so I also still want to mention, too, there are several other techniques that allows you to get elevation information. I just talked about that surveying, surveying technique. But there's also photogrammetry, of course, where you have multi-angular photogrammetry of photos that you can take. And photogrammetry allows you then to calculate the height of different uh, uh, targets or, or things that you see and um, want to take pictures of. So the drone, for instance, that I've been showing in the past, uh, uh, you can use that to actually measure uh, heights if you take uh, different pictures uh, from different angles from a, a tree, for instance. And the other one that I was going to mention was the inter interferometric SAR, synthetic aperture radar. If SAR is basically used, and you saw that in last week's chapter, also used for looking at elevation data. And that's very likely slightly cheaper maybe, but uh, it, it's uh, a larger area and doesn't give you as much detail as LiDAR. Um, and just to, to uh, keep in mind, also the LiDAR is a very sophisticated technique, but because of all the different uh, disciplines that came together, uh, uh, we, we now can use the GPS, very sophisticated GPS system, with the integrated uh, measuring unit. The integrated measuring unit is basically bringing all the signals together for, and timestamp the signals, so you get the receiver, 
and that um, the transmitter, the receiver, the GPS unit, the integrated measuring unit that actually keeps track of all the, the movement of the airplane, and that gets all basically uh, timestamped and recorded in the, this IMU. So, and then with combine that with the, the computer, you basically have a system that really uh, allows us to do these really fine scaled uh, LiDAR measurements. So, uh, Again, uh, like I said, a lighter is an up-and-coming technique and has been out there for a few years now and uh, um, you definitely want to know about lighter. So uh, hopefully you have fun today uh, and this week uh, working on lighter uh, and uh, I'll see you next week.